Let's go enter a material resource. I'm going to get to the resource sheet in a different way this time. I'm going to go to view and the view tab and I'm going to click resource sheet and there we are. So here's a material and uh, for example here's our Cisco access points. Uh, notice that uh, we anticipate four of them and things like that. So um, let's fill one in. So I'm going to go down here and uh, I'm going to say we want to have uh, cat six wire. And the cat six wire, if I press enter, um, fills in and notice that project wants me to make it a work resource. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to make this a material resource. In other words, something that's used and that we cost out by the quantity. So uh, how are we going to pay for this? Well, it's actually going to be by the foot. So I'm going to just going to type in foot FT right there in my units. I could have my initials if I want to, but I'm just going to use the word wire. Then it has no group. Uh, has no time, but my cost, my standard rate, uh, is going to be uh, something that's going to calculate. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in 26 cents a foot. So it's going to be 0 0.26 cents per foot. And that's all I need to do, except uh, when it comes to uh, when am I going to pay for it. So down here, you'll notice that uh, my cost per use is not going to be there. Uh, is going to be zero. Uh, I can either do it at the start of the finish but or prorate it, but in most of the cases I'm going to purchase the wire in the beginning and then I'm going to use it in a prorated fashion. So I'm going to leave that at prorated and of course because it's not a work resource I don't need a calendar. It's available all the time. This last column base actually means base calendar. So we want to make sure that we have everyone working on their specific calendars so that we don't overwork them or work them during times when they're not available. So what we want to do is go down here and let's just uh, select the network consultant because they're going to work on their own calendar system. Let's go down to Lamonia and she's going to work on a specified calendar where she's available 25% of the time. So let's go ahead and make sure that she's got that 25% of the time in the calendar so we can schedule her appropriately. Well, I'm going to go back up to the Project tab, and I'm going to select Change Work Time. And this is our standard working time calendar. So notice that um, it's going to be a calendar four, and we're going to save that at the end. It's going to be based on the standard calendar. But we want to make sure that we schedule her for the right times when she's available. So I'm going to go down to Work Weeks, and I'll go over to Details. And now I've got my schedule up. So I'm going to select Monday through Friday like so. And uh, let's say that she's available only two hours a day. She's available from 1 to 3 p.m. So I'm going to say set days to these specific times. I'll select that and delete it. And I'm going to say 1 p.m. And she's available until 3 p.m. And uh, that's the only one that I really want scheduled. The rest of this is, is blank. So now I've got her scheduled five days a week from 1 to 3. We'll click OK. And now I'll create a new working calendar, and that calendar will be called uh, Lamonia. And we'll click OK. Do you want these changes to resource, just reflected in the resource? You bet I do. OK. So now I've got that one calendar for her. I'll click OK. And I'll go up here, and I'll say, please change that to the Lamonia calendar. And now she can be scheduled between 1 and 3 only, if she's outside those hours, she's going to turn red for us.